Who put that in there? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Today I'm gonna to walk you guys through how I installed bed lights. Let's try that again. That's better. In the back of my pickup. Now there are probably a hundred videos on YouTube explaining how to do this, but let me explain why you wanna watch this video and install your lights like I did. So what a lot of guys will do is rig up a switch that turns the lights on when the tailgate goes down. As you can see, mine aren't set up like that. Yeah, real cool, Adam. So where's the switch? No switch either. Well, at least not one in the traditional sense. So how are they rigged up? They're tied to my dome light with a relay. I have found this setup to be incredibly useful and have way more advantages than the first two I mentioned. What's the problem with the tailgate method? Well, you tell me. How are you gonna drive around town with your lights and your truck bed off when you have seven four foot by eight foot sheets of plywood in the bed of your truck and your tailgate's down? Or maybe 125 10 foot two by fours. I may or may not have done both of those things before. The manual switch is a nice idea, but unless you have some kind of timer tied to it, you run the risk of leaving it on and killing your battery. What's cool about this method is that anytime your dome lights are on, you've got light in the bed of your truck. So if you're like me and you live in Indiana and the fall time is dark at five o'clock, you just got home from picking up some at the hardware store, perhaps the liquor store, you got your tonneau down, you can't see anything. So you're already opening your door, you may as well have your truck bed lights on. All right, enough yapping. Let me show you how I hook this up and what you're gonna need. Let's first start with the lights. Mine are just little six LEDs per square and I've got I think eight here. And this is one strand. I will link this below if I can find it on Amazon still. I actually installed this about eight or eight and a half years ago. So this install has stood the test of time thus far. I'll also find a few other options and link those below as well. There's quite a few on Amazon. In addition to the lights here, are a few items you're gonna need. Principally the relay, and we'll talk about how this works in a moment. It looks a little intimidating if you're not familiar with what a relay is and how it works, but this is what you're gonna need in order to set it up like I did. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. In addition to the relay, some black and red 16 gauge wire, perhaps some electrical tape, some butt connectors, or you can solder everything and use heat shrink, whatever your preferred method is to connect you know, low voltage wire like this. These are a lot quicker for me anyway. You also need a T-tap. This is integral to making the setup I have with the relay work. Now what this is, is it's all plastic, but for this little bitty metal piece inside, and what you do is you clamp this around the wire that goes to your dome light. And when you do, that little piece of metal in there pierces the insulation and effectively carries the signal from the dome light wire into this. And what on the back of this, you take one of these blade connectors and stick it on top of the T-tap. And now what you do is run a wire out of the back of this blade and that wire then feeds your relay. You also want a fuse holder. This is gonna be the first item that's coming off the battery. I think this one has a 30 amp fuse in it. That's way overkill for LED lights. I'd probably step that down to like a 10 or a 15. Let me sketch this out on paper real quick for you and walk you through the process and then we'll jump over to the truck and show you it in practice. Before I show you guys my insanely awesome drawing skills here, let's walk through this relay real quick and explain the wires. Be helpful, I think. If you've never worked with a relay before, they're really, there are two components. Kind of this pigtail with all the wires, which is where you do your work, and then this plug. Actually, down in the plug, you probably can't see it, but there are numbers down here. And you can only put this plug on one way, so you can't mess it up. But these numbers correspond to the little wiring diagram they give you. But for those of you who've never experienced working with a relay, let's talk about what a relay is. A relay is a way for a low voltage circuit, in this case the dome light, to control a high voltage circuit. Now, I wouldn't consider the LED lights that I'm putting on my truck to be a high voltage circuit, but it's a switch nonetheless that's automated. Unless you guys want to go crazy and put a bunch of old school halogens in the bed of your truck. All right, so there's five wires on here. Simplify this real quick. The yellow one will not be used, and I'll explain that in more detail later. But your red wire is the one that will go to your battery on your truck. Your black wire is your negative, which will go to the battery. The blue wire is the positive power source that will go to your LED lights ultimately. And the white wire is the trigger wire in from the dome light. Clear as mud. So here's what I drew up for you guys. Starting with the battery, your positive out to your fuse holder. 
So that's essentially taking this fuse holder here, you would cut it in half, they come looped like this. The one end of this would go to the battery, and you you know, put like you know little crimp rings on it or however you want to get it attached to your battery. But one end of the battery passes through the fuse, and then the other end of this positive would run from the fuse holder to the relay, in which case would be your red wire. From there, out of the relay, the black wire is your negative, and that negative runs back to the battery. I know you're probably supposed to ground that elsewhere, but I've taken it to the battery without issue. So the white wire is the trigger wire, and this is where you use that T-tap. you got to find the dome wire in the truck somewhere and T-tap in, and that's the trigger wire that goes to the relay. So when the dome wire is hot, i.e. when the lights are on, this sends a signal back to the relay that says this is, hey, we need to turn power onto the circuit, in which case it will close the circuit and send power down 87 here, which runs a positive to your light. So in this case, you got blue coming out of here. Blue runs to the light circuit. And then you got to ground your lights themselves. Most of these will come with a wiring diagram and give you a couple scenarios. In our case, it is a normally off relay with a positive trigger, the dome light being our positive trigger. And so back to the yellow wire, 87A. Like I said, they're all numbered and they're numbered on the diagram. But 87A, that middle one is not used. Effectively, if you were to wire this up to 87A, the yellow instead of the blue, when the dome light is off and the relay does not have power coming from the dome light, then the truck bed lights would be on. It essentially is inverted. I can't think of a use case off the top of my head right now, but someone in the comments, please throw out a use case where you would actually use both 87A and 87. So back out at the truck, what does this look like? But it follows that diagram there. So here's my positive off the battery, right to my fuse holder. Red wire runs up into my relay, and here's my relay. As you can see, every relay is a little bit different. This one does not have the yellow wire in the middle on 87A. It's this red one, and I just got it capped. I don't know if you can see it right there, but it's loose, not doing anything. There you go, you can see it's loose and not doing anything, not tied to anything. That's a bit of a mess under here. But I do have all my grounds landing right here on the battery, like I said in my diagram. At one point, I actually had this also triggering some uh, step board lights by my Nerf bars down there, which are pretty cool, but they since went out. But everything up here is following this diagram to a T. The hardest part about this would be getting finding your dome light wire. I'll show you guys roughly where I found my dome light wire and tied into it. Yours is probably gonna be different, different year, different model, etc. Your best bet is to go out into some of the forums and try to find the specific wire you're looking for. There's a lot of guys out there who detail wiring harnesses. Or if you can chase the wire as close to the dome light itself and not in the harness, and not in the main harness, that'd be helpful too. So in my case, and for the record, this is the 2014 Ram 1500, there is a bank of wires or a harness right underneath this step plate. So if you, I don't remember what color wire it was, but I found the wire, located the wire, that was my dome light, like I said, via the forums, I believe. And then that's where I take that T-tap and clamped over top of it, and then ran my wire, trigger wire off of that, so this would come off and go back into, back through the firewall, which I didn't poke any holes in the firewall, I just found an existing hole, but through the firewall and up to that trigger on the relay. And there's a good possibility I did it way up by the e-brake as well. And actually, if I said that my 12 volt positive going back to the bed lights went through the firewall and the negative coming back, they did not. I actually went down below the firewall and underneath the truck the whole way back. And I did encapsulate that wire in some of this plastic housing just to keep it protected. But yeah, the 12 volt coming off the relay drops down underneath the firewall and then is tucked up under the truck and zip tied all the way back until it pops up. I don't remember how I did this, but it fished it all the way up until the wire comes out right in there. You can't see it, but the wire comes up that side wall, and here's where you can see it coming out. So the positive and negative land right here, and I believe I just butt connected and probably taped up those wires. I know that some people will argue that in this application you should probably solder and shrink wrap those joints or those connections as opposed to using butt connectors and tape. This has literally been installed for eight and a half years. This truck is a 2014 and I've had zero issues thus far. There are also no connections kind of out in the elements, if you will. 
I got one back here in the bed of the truck, down in the pocket, and everything else is up under the hood. Another nice thing about this setup is that the dome lights on this truck, and I would assume most trucks these days, will kick off after 15 minutes of the door being open or the light being on. So you always have that peace of mind that you're never gonna run your battery dead by having these back here. Also, you always have the option of turning your dome lights on via the dial in the cab, thus eliminating these lights on demand if the doors are closed. I also know these lights don't look super bright right now in this environment. There's a lot of natural daylight pouring in here. As you saw on the thumbnail, they do a great job eliminating the space. If you have a tunnel cover, this is an absolute must to have, I'm telling you. I'll throw in some footage of this at night at the end of this video so you guys can see it in the darkness. But going forward, I can tell you that any truck I ever own is going to now have this set up. I also do know that some of the newer trucks have their own bed lighting from the factory. I got a buddy who's got an F-150 with some lighting right here. But it, it just doesn't compare to the illumination you get out of this setup. If you guys have any questions, please drop a comment below. I'm happy to answer what I can. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button to come back and see me sometime. And right now, I'll give you guys a look at this in the darkness. Take care, everyone. We'll see you on the next video. There's a better look at how bright it is at night. More than enough light to see what you're doing or what's in your bed. Give me a shout if you guys have questions. Take care.